Hi everyone, this is Bill Cantor. I'm a financial planner and estate planning attorney in Chicago, Illinois. I'm also the author of the book, Your Best Retirement Plan, How to Eliminate Market Risk, Avoid Taxes, and Have Money for the Rest of Your Life. And in this video, I'm going to describe some of the key points in the book, and uh, hopefully it'll be educational for you. The book basically talks about uh, why four reasons why the 401k and IRA is a bad idea, and that is Number one, market loss, especially while you're in retirement and you lose a good amount of your money to the market. Number two, future taxes on withdrawals that you'll have to pay when you take your money out of your retirement funds. Number three, there are great fees in some of these accounts, especially 401ks. And number four, early withdrawal penalties. If you take your money out before 59 and a half and you have to pay extra penalties to the IRS for doing that. We discuss the alternative to traditional retirement planning, and that is Index Universal Life, which is a, what I call a high cash value, low death benefit life insurance. And we're going to describe that in this video. Today, we're going to talk about these two main problems, and that is market loss and future taxes, why it's important to avoid them, and how to avoid them in your retirement funds. So first of all, we believe that market loss is unacceptable in retirement. This is a picture of the S&P 500 performance for the 17 years from 97 to 2013, you see it's a lot of ups and a lot of downs. You know, up here 100% and then down 57%. And this is very scary to an investor. And I ask my clients all the time, could this happen in the years right before or during your retirement? You, know, you build up a nice nest egg and then you lose half of it while you were drawing out money and you can't go back to work because you're retired. And what if it happened to you? So this we have to avoid. And it's not just the last... 17 years. This is uh, the market performance since 1968, almost 50 years. You see, you always have these 36% loss, 48%. Down here is two 50% losses. Every six to eight years, the market does one of these corrections. So you have to avoid that. It's, it's coming. It, it always does that, and we need to avoid that in retirement funds. Second thing we have to do is try to avoid taxes. This is a picture of the tax rates since 1916. You see here until today. So you see, this is the marginal, highest marginal tax rate is the blue line. So you see here that the average tax rate since 1916 is 61%. We now are at 39.6%, so the taxes have a ways to go up, and the government has to pay for all the debt that it takes on. According to David Walker, who was a former Controller General of the United States, he said that unless we begin to get our fiscal house in order, there's simply no other way to handle our ever-mounting debt burdens except by doubling taxes over time. And if you think taxes are going up, whether they double or not, I don't know, but if you think they're going up, my question is, does it make sense to defer into higher taxes? You know, why put money away now, which will be taxed later at a higher rate than it is now? So we have the, what would be the ideal place for your money? The ideal place for your money would be something that is extremely safe, using A plus or double A rated companies, which have absolutely no stock market loss the growth would be tax-free, that you don't report it on your 1040, on your tax return. The distribution when you take out the money is also tax-free. The transfer to heirs is also tax-free when you pass away and you leave it to your heirs, it would be tax-free. You get a better than market rate, and the example we're gonna use, the 27-year average is 8.26%, and the 15-year return is 7.2%, even with this volatile market. Of course, historical rates, the fact that it's done that in the past is no guarantee of future performance. But it has done this, and it's all tax-free. Other features of this is going to be creditor-proof by statute in many states, including Illinois, where I am. So if you have money in there, they can't sue you. Take the money. High contribution limits. Unlike a traditional IRA, you, you're not limited to five or $6,000 of putting the money in here. It goes to your heirs probate-free. Even if you do not have a will or trust, they still get the money probate-free. There's no 59.5% withdrawal penalty if you take your money out before 59.5% like an IRA or 401k. There's no required minimum distributions at 70 and a half, like a traditional retirement plan. You also have great liquidity in these accounts. And when I say it's a average rate is above 8.26%, it's because we're gonna use a company which has a zero floor and a 13 and a half percent cap. That means that the worst you'll do is zero, they'll credit you with zero percent, and the best you'll do is 13 and a half percent. And we'll show that on the next slide how that works. This account can also help pay for long-term health care costs. So what is this program? This is a special kind of 
high cash value, low death benefit life insurance policy called indexed universal life, where we purchase the smallest amount of life insurance required by the IRS for the policy to remain tax-free. That is, life insurance is tax-free as long as it has life insurance in it. So the IRS has rules how much life insurance you need to buy, and we buy that minimum amount of life insurance. And then the rest of the money goes into the tax-free cash value, according to IRS Section 72E. So remember, the main thing I said is it's the smallest amount of life insurance we buy, and the rest of the money goes into the cash value. And then every year, the company credits you with interest rate. So here's the way the interest rate works. So you see, this is the, since 1988, this column here is the actual S&P return from January 1st to December 31st. And this is what would be credited to your account, this column here. Okay, so let's take uh, the first uh, three years. 1988, the market went up 12.4%, so you would have gotten 12.4% because you get up to the cap of 13% each year. And then the market the next year in 89 went up 27%, so you get up to 13. Stop, the cap kicks in and you get 13. But then in 1990, the market went down 6% and you got zero because the worst you could do is zero. And you see this more acutely in 2000, 2001, 2002, the market went down each of these years, but you got the zero because the worst you can do is 0% when the market goes down. And just take three other years. In 2007, the market went up 3%, you got the 3%. When it went down 38%, you didn't, get, you didn't lose anything. And when it went up 23% in 2009, so you got the 13% cap kicked in. The average of the 27 years would be 8.12%, or almost 7% since 2000. And all of that is tax-free with no risk of market loss, because the worst you'll do is zero. Now, again, this is historical rates. This is not guaranteed. But this is how the mark, this policy performs. This is a graph of that. If you had $100,000 in the S&P versus the uh, IUL, the Index Universal Life Policy, since 1999. So you see the red line here is the market, the S&P 500. And the blue line is the Index Universal Life Policy. The blue line has this lock and reset feature that is every time you make a gain in the policy, since the worst you'll do is zero next year, it's locked in at that rate, at that amount, then you can just go up from there. So you see, would have had 102,000 of taxable money in the market, you have 220,000 of tax-free money in the Index Universal Life Policy. And of course, I ask, which would you rather have? I think it's obvious that the IUL makes more sense. Plus, that's just the cash value. There's also good permanent life insurance attached to this policy as well. If you want more information about this, please uh, contact me. My phone number is 847-674-6470 or my website, cantorwm.com. Or you can get a free copy of the book at www.yourbestretirementplan.com. Thanks a lot.